I'm going to walk you through the setup of how I keep my screen. I'm doing this for my students, whether you're taking a class on Craftsy, at a conference, or at the store. This is how I get my screen to look the way it does, and maybe this will help you set up your screen and at least familiarize you with the various features. When you look at the new screen, you can see up here we are set with tabs right across the screen. We also have a ribbon toolbar, or they call it the quick access toolbar, and we will cover that. Right now we're going to click over here at Option, choose Options, and we're going to calibrate our screen. By calibrating our screen, we're going to take a metric ruler and measure from the left to the right and enter the number of millimeters here. You can input it or use the arrows. Once you have that set, it's great because that's going to take the distortion out of your screen. Since we have so many wide screens, it's nice to have a more accurate one-to-one -one ratio. So I'm going to click OK. The next thing we need to look at is the view, the way the screen actually presents itself. By going up here to view itself, we can turn on these items. I'm going to turn them off for a moment so you can see how that looks. You can see things disappearing on the left. Now look to the right, and you'll see lots of things disappearing. I'm going to turn them back on because I like these options. I use them a lot. Oops, didn't quite get that one turned on. And then I have text the color palette. We're going to skip over the reference window for this video. I have the ruler, and if your ruler should be better in inches rather than metric, that's easily done. You can click here. That turns from inches to millimeters, which is nice. And here I have the grid. Show grid or with axis. If I turn that off, it becomes dots. So chances are you're going to want that turned on. I'm going to leave Snap to Grid off for this short video, and you can see I have it set to 10 millimeters, and that, that forms the boxes. So if I have an area that I want to fill with satin stitches, and I see that that object is larger than one of those boxes, then I'll probably choose a tatami fill over choosing a satin. If this doesn't make sense to you, then by all means take my class Digitizing Machine Embroidery Designs on Craftsy.com. All right, looking here, the next thing we're going to do is discuss a little bit about the pinning. There are little push pins, and when you click on it, do you see how it forms a little hide box? I prefer to keep these open, but if you had a small screen and you were trying to maximize space, that would be a wonderful option for you. Another thing you should know is it's easy to dislocate one of these windows. So by grabbing it at the top, and if you look here, there's some little markers. So I'm going to click here to the left side of the screen, and it pops right into position. So you can snap those windows back into their position easily. You can also untab something by mistake. So I'm going to pull this. These are the common things that happen in class. They're, they're hard to untab when you're trying, but very easy to do it by accident. Trust me on that. I see it happen all the time in class. So when this happens, if you were just simply to come here and put it to the right, that would be fine, except now it's made your screen small, and it's not really where you wanted it to be, so you must grab it and move it over and drop it right in there, and everything is fixed beautifully. So very simple to do. If you also want to change the order of the tabs, then click on it and just move it over. You can see. And I can bring it a little further. Whoops, didn't quite grab it. There we go. And I can move it over one more time. So you can see by left clicking and dragging it over, you can change the order. The last thing I want to show you is going up to the quick access toolbar. And that's up here. That's our, um, this symbol here is for your file. And then these are the various tools that I prefer to have at the top of mine. You may choose to use the same ones or have something different, but at least you will know how they got up there. So as in Windows, there's a drop down, and these are the common ones that they give you, and I have them all checked. You can see that. Then you can click on more commands. Here's some more popular ones. 
I happen to like something that's not really in the popular command because I do a lot of digitizing and export files in different formats. I will click here and let's see if I can grab that a moment. We're going to hit kind of caught up behind. Here we go. Export file. So if I select that, right now it's not available for me to click add because I already have it here. But if I didn't, I would click add. And then once it's on my screen, I can position it up or down using the arrows. The most important thing you have to remember is to click OK when you're done to save your settings. So basically, if you get lost, you can go home and here's all your digitizing tools and your text. So if you're trying to create something, you always know to go home and look for the tools there. If you're trying to change the look of, of the view, then you go to the View tab. If you lose one of your happy little windows and you don't see as, as an option, then again, go back up to View and make sure that you've selected it, as I've shown you. And that's all there is to setting up your screen. And this concludes this short video.